Thank you, Sharon, and uh, I'm pleased to be part of the AI Technoth and uh, speaking on a topic that is very close to my heart, um, something uh, that I've been working on for many, many years, face recognition, and glad uh, to be able to contribute. The purpose of this research is to try and um, develop some really powerful uh, computer-based face recognition algorithms. Uh, so we use deep learning, which is a state-of-the-art machine learning or artificial intelligence technique uh, to craft uh, uh, some good face recognition algorithms. So the motivation for this is to, to, to try and copy how humans recognize faces uh, and see whether we can learn uh, the way humans recognize faces and try and see whether we can teach the computer to do similar sort of things. Um, and to do this, um, let me just highlight an, a, a simple experiment that um, people uh, do. Uh, this experiment is run on babies. So first of all, what they do is they put this face-like shape on a placard and they uh, flash this on uh, newborn babies. Now these babies are newborn, they haven't seen anything. And what they, uh, the researchers want to find out is whether uh, babies respond to these faces. So they just um, flash these and the babies start actually tracking this. Now, interestingly, as said before, the baby hasn't seen anything, but the baby tracks this face. Now, just to make sure the baby actually tracks this particular face, what they do is they put the placard upside down so the eyes are beneath and the mouth is at the top now. And they do exactly the same thing. So they flash, uh, uh, they flash it in, in front of the babies. As I said before, the baby hasn't seen anything, uh, certainly no faces, but the baby in this case is not interested in this object. But on the other way around, with the normal way, the baby is interested. So that kind of shows that or explains us that face recognition is kind of embedded in our brain, uh, at least. And in, from an evolutionary point of view, it makes sense because uh, the most common objects that we will see in our entire lives is faces. So uh, it makes sense to have some special capacity in our brain to be able to recognize uh, faces. So that kind of makes sense. So that, that, that the, the face recognition example is a very good example for a computer to be taught or, or actually teach computers or to try and see how powerful we can build these algorithms, especially deep learning artificial intelligence algorithms. So this is why we want to take this challenge of face recognition and teach the machine to do that and try and see whether we can beat the human or at least come to the same level of the uh, human being in terms of face recognition. Now, again, if I show you this example, uh, you probably, if you have a brief look at this, this um, pictures, you can see who this person is very, very quickly. And, and uh, we all know that is uh, Barack Obama. You, pr you probably haven't seen Barack Obama um, in, in real life, but you, you have seen him on, on TV and newspapers. Um, so the, the interesting thing is, again, you only need a very small cue in the case of humans to be able to recognize the person. Now, uh, can we do very similar things or can we do exactly this in the machine and can we replicate the human face recognition in a machine? So that's the sort of question that uh, we are interested in and that's the sort of question we have been working over the years. Now, the way we do it is uh, uh, simple. We use um, uh, a powerful algorithm. Uh, again, this example, let's have a quick look at this example now. In this, if you take a brief moment and look at these pictures, um, are they um, twins? Are they identical twins? Uh, do you really know? Can you can you distinguish between them? And now that's a good question. I, um, I don't want to give the answer right now, but maybe later on I will give you the answer. So let's have a quick, have a quick brief look at this and then we'll come back to this uh, later on. So how do we teach the machine to do face recognition? So what we use a, a technique called deep learning, uh, which is not actually a new technique or new algorithm. Uh, it's actually 50 years old, this particular algorithm. Now the algorithm works in a very simple way. It's, it's called reinforcement learning or, 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 or deep learning. Uh, essentially, you throw away lots of data to, into, into, into the machine and ask the machine to figure out the patterns in this data. Uh, so it's very much like how humans learn. So if you imagine um, a three-year-old, you want to teach this three-year-old how to recognize cars. What you do is you show that the three-year-old some cars um, and with very few examples, the three-year-old seems to actually understand the difference between a car and truck very easily. 
and we use similar sort of things in, in teach the machine to do the same thing. So in the case of face recognition, what we do is we throw a huge database, a, a data set of faces into the machine. So thousands and hundreds of thousands of faces into the machine, one after the other, and then um, ask the machine to actually look at these images in the case of faces. And then interestingly, after a while, the machine figures out what a face is um, and understands a face and can distinguish between a face and any other object. So the way it works is you you filter these image. In each case, each of the faces goes through layers, different layers and classifiers, and then ultimately it, cr it creates a face class. Now this face class has got 128 floating point numbers, so 128 parameters. And these 128 floating numbers are enough to uniquely recognize a face or uniquely represent a face. So you could throw away the image of once you actually pass through this deep learning algorithm, you could throw away the original image and you can have the 128 numbers which represent that face. And that's unique. That's enough for us to be able to recognize that face. So in a sense, it's a very, very powerful way of encoding the face and and this works for each and every human being if you can imagine so each in and every human being's face can be encoded in 128 numbers through this deep learning framework now exactly how it boils down to these 128 numbers we don't know uh, but i don't think it matters that much because uh if i ask you how do you recognize an apple in your head and how do you recognize a human face in your head you probably don't know how it works so it's a very, very similar way. So we, we, we mimic human neuronal structure, human brain structure to, to actually um, uh, digitally kind of embed in, in a deep learning algorithm. So it's, it's very similar. So the, 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 the takeaway from here is you throw uh, the machine, um, you throw the machine uh, a number of images, face images, and then it encodes it to sort of a given number of parameters in this case 128 parameters now we can use this algorithm once it's developed it's very very powerful you can then start using this algorithm to do face recognition so let's give you an example here uh, to test the algorithm we have uh, uh, the image of a queen uh, the queen in the middle and what we want to do is how similar is this image to uh, images of the queen um, around this so uh, now you can see in our algorithm, anything below 70% means it's not an identity image. So the distance between a given two images, if there is sufficiently close, it should be 70% and high in, in, in terms of a percentage. So in this case, you can see in all these cases, we are getting 70% uh, and higher. That means the, these are all images of queens according to our algorithm. In fact, they are. So these are all images of queen at different ages, um, different ties and things. Uh, and sometimes it's very, very difficult if, if, for example, if I showed you this image as um, on its own, it will be very difficult for you to kind of, you know, um, say this is this is the image of a queen, of the queen. Uh, again, if I go to this image and show it, it will be very, very difficult on its own. Um, so the algorithm seems to be very powerful in, in kind of distinguishing between um, images and, and, and getting the similarity right. So I come back to the original image where I showed you those uh, twin-like uh, uh, images, faces. Again, these are not twins, they are called twin strangers. They look alike, uh, they're different people, but they um, introduce makeup and other facial uh, cues and also lighting and things like that. And, and, and they look exactly uh, uh, similar um, in, in uh, they look like twins, but they're not twins. Uh, from our algorithm, which we can actually determine they're not twins. So for example, here you see we got 66.5% in these two images. That means they're not the same person because remember 70% and above uh, is an identity image. So here it's not, um, um, according to our algorithm, none of these images, um, they are not the same people in, in, in those images. So that shows how powerful the algorithm is in, in many ways, because in some cases it is actually beating the human in, in the recognition process. So that's good news. Now, um, we also, in our algorithm, we also try and embed face aging. Uh, now, the reason why you want to embed face aging is, imagine in, in a case of a passport, you're getting a passport for 10 years, and by the time it's ninth year, you don't probably look anything like the, uh, that passport. So there must be a way to actually age the picture of the passport and try and bring to, uh, to a, um, the right age and trying to do the comparison. So that's one area. And then of course, face aging has got 
other applications uh, in things in, like including um, missing, finding missing, missing people. So the way we uh, do face aging is we use again machine learning or artificial intelligence. So the way we do is we uh, gather, uh, gather a huge data set, a data set of uh, faces of different ethnicities, and different ages and then we throw these data set into the machine learning algorithm and ask the machine to figure it out just like um similar very similar to face recognition where we throw the data set and we ask the the algorithm to figure out the pattern so interestingly after throwing lots of data and um uh, running the algorithm ultimately the algorithm figures out the pattern for human aging for various ethnicities which means uh for example caucasians uh, uh age differently uh, other ethnicities age differently. So we can actually embed all this in one algorithm. And then once we have it, we can throw a new face and then ask uh, a given age and it will predict what the face would look like at a given age. So one question, you, uh, so here's an example where you put the input image of uh, Princess Charlotte and then this is our prediction of how she would look like at different ages. Now one question you would have is how do you know, uh, how, how would you know this is accurate, this is correct? Now it's very simple to actually verify this algorithm. One way you can do is you can try and take somebody, uh, a known person and de-age that person using our algorithm because our algorithm works forwards as well as backwards. So we can actually de-age that person using our algorithm and then take a real image of that person at that age and then compare using face recognition. So here is, is the case where we took Angelina Jolie's face and then we de-aged her six, at age six, and then we can take an image of, a real image of her at age six, and then do face recognition. In a similar way, here's me at 46, and then um, a, a computer generated uh, image of myself at age 10. So we can do the verification using this. Now, let me show you an interesting example of this work, um, which is, um, which is real and 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 which we are in some ways kind of um, kind of proud uh, um, for being able to actually apply this algorithm. So here the case is um, uh, the Salisbury poisoning case. In this case, we have uh, two people uh, with two different names uh, and, and essentially two different identities. And the idea here is uh, asking the question whether this is the same people, although they 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 have two different identities, two different passports. Um, and in fact, they, 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 they turn out to be the same person, although they, they uh, have two different identities. Uh, so we were given uh, these two images and asked whether they are the same people. Uh, so what we did was we actually brought them to the same age, age 30 in this case, and then did face recognition on these. And it turns out that the similarity is very, very high. So it shows that this is the same people. Uh, so this is one of the suspects in um, Salisbury poisoning case. And then the other end of the suspect is uh, Petro. Uh, so we have an image of him at 2000, taken at 2001, and then another image of him 2016, believed to be the same person. Again, we were asked actually to do the face matching. And then we found out that the matching um, is, is a, the similarity is very, very high. So we were sure that this is the same person. There was a third suspect in um, in this case. Uh, again, uh, we were given two very grainy uh, images, uh, which are blurry. Um, again, we found out the, the the similarity between the images are 78, 70, over 78 percent, which means uh, it's above 70 percent, which shows that um, they are the same people. So this is a kind of interesting work uh, from our point of view uh, that we can actually apply this um, our face recognition technique to. To, to solve some real cases. Uh, here's another example that uh, the work that we did for New York Times where a, uh, this is um, a suspect related to Khashoggi case. Uh, so in the center is a, a, an image of the person taken a CCTV image from in, in the airport uh, just before they were, they, they were leaving uh, Turkey. And then these are uh, images around, these are images that are taken from um, social media um, and we were asked actually to see whether there, there is a match between them. And then we found out that there is there is a match in fact between uh, these people. So again, this is an interesting um, application. So the application of this face recognition technique is is, is immense. Um, and and the, once you train the algorithm, you can actually translate it and you can, uh, you can diversify it as well to other domains. And uh, let me just show you another example. So here's an example where we are actually, we have um, adapted our algorithm to do um, a tumor detection 
Again, the idea is you throw lots of tumor and non-tumor um, images to this and the algorithm learns about tumor and non-tumor and then you can uh, throw new images which the algorithm hasn't seen and it will tell you whether it's a tumor or non-tumor. So it's very, very interesting uh, just to take um, a face recognition algorithm and then adapt it to, uh, to cancer detection. So we have similar ideas that we are uh, we are actually working at this point in time. Uh, I mean, we all know that this is um, uh, a time where uh, COVID is uh, kind of, you know, everywhere. And uh, if you look at this image, this is uh, COVID-19, um, the coronavirus under an electron microscope. And you can see distinct structures uh, of this and it's distinct, this virus is distinct. Uh, now the question is, can we actually train an image recognition system so that uh, we can diagnose um, COVID-19 very quickly and efficiently. Now, of course, electron microscopes are um, expensive and we can actually look at these things under an electron microscope and use deep learning or machine learning to try and classify this. So our idea is whether we can actually see the structure uh, of the actual, um, um, at, at least the sample taken, the structure shape under a normal microscope and see whether the normal, the, the shape is um, anywhere different uh, in the presence of COVID-19 or, or kind of coronavirus. And if there is, we can actually develop a very simple algorithm um, based on our face recognition to try and very quickly diagnose, um, uh, uh, put a diagnosis across. So that's some of the thoughts that uh, that we are hearing at this point in time. But the face recognition work, of, of course, is, is, is very interesting and, and, and ongoing. And, and you can see the power of face recognition here is that um, it actually beats the human in many ways. First of all, it can recognize, um, uh, do the similarity very quickly and very efficiently, but also very powerfully it can troll through large databases. So imagine like you have millions and millions of faces in a base database and you have a grainy CCTV image of, of a portion of the face and you want to see whether this person exists. And our algorithm can actually do that almost kind of real time. Whereas if you ask a human to do it, that will take probably years for a human to troll through millions of um, faces. So the idea of applying this sort of algorithms in a, in, in a machine learning and deploying a machine to do that is obviously very plausible and very powerful. And this is the reason why we want to kind of um, um, kind of progress in this in this domain. So that's all I have to say about um, this at this point in time. And I'm uh, happy to take the discussions forward. Thank you. Thank you very much and uh, happy to be um, taking the discussions forward um, and happy to participate and contribute more.